Well, I come across there was a house in 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 in, a, in um London where all of the way the artists them used to stay. And one day I went there, was looking for Nagomaris. And I see Prince Paul, I was lying on the ground in pain. He, he, he had a stomach problem. So I take him up off of the floor and take him to West Middlesex Hospital for treatment. So I spend the day with him, they treated him. And I take him back to where he was. And out of that good I done for him, it bring me and him together. Because I knew him from Jamaica well, but we weren't that close. So I've been back to the house a few times and I see him. And he asked me to take him places. Then fast forward the clock back to Jamaica. I went back to Jamaica. I was working at Harry J. Studio. And father came to me and said, asked me if he could have do an album for me. And when I come back to England, I send him a, a plane ticket. So I said, all right, no problem. So I was working at the time with Earl 16, Viceroy, Winston Jarrett, quite a few artists. So we started the Prince Farai album. And the vibes was really, really good that day. That uh, he said to me, um, him voice come back to him, the original song it was. And he wanted to do the whole album, the whole that finish it that day. And after I'm gone about six June, I said, No, Prince, come back tomorrow. Come finish the full tune fresh, make it sound fresh. So him say, all right. And when he was leaving me, I used to sell K88 tube. He asked me for two of them, so I gave it to him. And I was supposed to meet him the morning at Eyeglass Rest. So the next morning, me and Just Stitch was sitting out at Eyeglass Rest waiting for him. I went to look. When I look, I see Jim Brown running, running from up Chancellor Lane without shirt, running come down the road. I went him stop in the right was the right was them killed Farai last night. Them kill him last night. So me and Jack it was in shock. And then just it start to cry because some time ago, then they shoot Stitch in his neck. And Stitch was lucky to be alive. So Stitch right away when he hear what I'm to Stitch. It's like him did feel the bullet when them did shoot him. And Stitch said to me, so come back, we'll go over for our house to see what happened. And when I went, when we drive over for our house, uh, when we go into the living room, it's like them did slide her coming the night before, the amount of blood. So what we see on the wall, because far I dead in a agony. Because what we was, them shoot him, lying down on the floor, but he wasn't dead. Apparently, when him leave our jail and went home, it was water in him land. And while he was water in the land, there was two guys over the road was looking at him, but he never paid him no mind. So by him went into him living room. His wife was in the living room with some woman getting ready to go to Panama on the next day to buy goods to come back to sell. So by far I roll up the wall, roll up the walls and went into the living room. The two guys then come across the road and was in the living room with him. And when them come in, them pull out them gun and say everybody in the room was to lie on the floor. Everybody lie down on the floor, but far I wife know the two guys them. And she put up resistance and she not lying down on the floor. And them shoot she first, but she never dead. And them shoot far away. 
lying down on the floor, but in, 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 in never dead at the time. But out of fear, I think them never carry far right to hospital. So he bleed, he bleed, he bleed to death. So when you look on the wall of the living room, you got that your far right fingerprint in blood all over the living room. When he was walking around, a wall onto the wall, and the blood in them fingerprint around down the wall. It was never ever a pleasant sight to see. And it broke my heart. It break my heart, the scene where I say, I never ever want to see another scene like that again. Uh, I don't think him deserve to die like that. And him no. die of stupidity. When dead from, it could have been second. Why are I produce himself? The only man I think produced far I was Joe Gibbs. And the sole reason why far I come to me for produce him simply it 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 out of the, the goodness I think what they do for him in England will bring me and him together. Him, 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 him trust me. And him, him, would, him always produce an artist. Me and Reggae Judge. Yeah. And I think that album was far I was to bring to England. I don't think that album has ever been released. The wife still have it. But the reason why far I dead was him keep a dance with Volky in a sound system. And in them days there, you give a deposit on the sound. And then after the dance, you pay the balance, thinking how the dance went for the night. And the owner for the sound, his woman was the gang leader for Mary Avenue. Then break a fight at the dance tonight and mash up the dance. And the owner for the sound wanted the balance of the payment. And for I said, he's not paying the balance of the payment because his, his woman mash up the dance. And the owner for the sound said, him want pay. So the owner for the sound send him boys them to kill for I think, but for them kill him for. But the owner for the sound, who was a top record producer, could have started out with far in a different way. This volcano sound, is this the same volcano sound related to John Jolas? Yeah, the same sound. Well, yes, John Joe was my friend too. I know him well, well, well. And when John Joe come to England, them used to visit me by my house. And personally, John Joe was a top gangster from Jamaica. And I took him one day down to the flower show in a Q garden. And John Joe climbed my house with him to the flowers. He had weaknesses for flowers. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here is a man who is a tapping force in a Jamaica who don't afraid of a man. But yet, when him see flowers, he is run out of my mm. I know him well. I was supposed to him too. I don't have nothing against him. I don't have nothing bad about him. Prince Farai, my brethren. Prince Farai and Bim Sherman. Yeah, yeah. You know, with the Pan Chancellor, you know, which is Eyeglass Rest, right? <clears throat> Remember, you have hundreds of people on the lane because all the tourists them come all over the globe have to come this up. If you want to find any reggae artist, Bob Marley, everybody, Peter Touch, your name is Bunny Whalers, everybody, big youth, the whole lot of mighty diamonds, everyone over there on the corner, see? So if you want anything, you have to come this up. Well, like this, a Prince Farah, I lock in every day. In the pan at the corner as the light before the record shop them even open. You see Prince Fire up on the corner with them big bag, you know, full of record. Cause we call him Vice of Thunder, in it. Yeah? yeah. So, and he was really, really close. You understand? Anyhow, we used to run a shop called Prince Amma Records, right in Orange Street, a record shop I had. And it was just me alone around the thing of a bridging called John Dredd. And I had a dread pan the corner too as much, yeah. Him just 
him, no, him, him never in the business, but him gradually come to the business, uh, product, produce music and so on. But him used to just like the amongst the man and man, right? It's another dreadlocks, right? So what I do, I have him in my shop as a as a, a manager in my shop. And like, you know, I'm a like, you know, I'm a big man at the business, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. So <clears throat> it's a true we used to run up and up on the corner and I walk with a bag for the shoulder every day and I sell all record, let maybe drop our five record a man shop, sell our return. Sometimes you go back all two weeks, I'm on the five five record, I'm still up on the up on the rock and everything. You know? <laughs> I'm on the boy bread in the record now, selling them to take them back, you know, and all them type of things. So two used to do them type of things and so on, hustling in it. And you know, me have my record shop and it was really, really beautiful, right? Just upon the step them alone, when you walk or come up into the shop, you will see said artists, them named Dennis Brown, Ep Tones, you name it. As far as you come up the stairs, it's a, it's a different artist name. You know, till you in the shop itself, right? And we have a sound system outside and a steel hand from up at the top of the window, a blast up the top of the road. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, so, every day I play music I go on. And yo, to me know Prince all right, that good, you know, we have friends and everything like that and so on. Mr. Tim said, all right, you know, some you can come in and come join with me still. And you know, because everybody I work with think on them shoulder, you understand? So you now you have a little premises now where people can come to you and come deal with your thing proper. So I'm coming at the thing. So I'm going to change my shop from Prince Amma Records to Prince and Prince Record. Yeah. And that's how me and him joined together. So we have we have Prince Farah, myself, and John, you know, in the shop. And we are on the thing. Anyhow, Prince Farah, they are coming to England. Because I'm on the way. I'll come and tour. I'll come release some songs and all them type of things. So I'm used to the Adrian Sherwood from It Run Record. And me get you understand, say no Adrian that way. So I said to him, say, you know, you know something, but I really like to go to England, you know. And go, you know, go release some come here, I do some production myself you now and everything. I'm gonna like to do some, you know, and go say, I'm gonna make some money and come back. <laughs> See? So I said to him, say, all right, I tell you though, introduce me to Adrian so I can have a talk. So I have a talk with Adrian. And I said to him, say, all right, I tell you what I do. I'm gonna send you a big box full, you know, the big Cravenier box. We have some big box of cartoon box, right? And I fill that a record, 12 inch, 7 inch record, and so on, and send that to Adrian Sherwood and set him say, you know something, buy me a plane ticket so I can come over. That's the first time I come to England, right? That's 1979. And I came over. Prince Farah came over. Bim Sherman came over. The Trevors came over, right? And we do a tour called Roots Encounter Part One. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you something. Every show sold out everywhere we go. We, we, we run out the whole of England, Scotland, Holland, and we just, have, we, we just have the place going, right? So, them times we have a lot of because them times they have some little like, um rock star and all this type of you know, them kind of people, some little like, people sing some kind of funny tune and thing like that. But then the monks, we still like the boomtown rats come in up at work, a tour with the boomtown rats. I end up at work with the Clash, I tour the Clash. I end up touring with um, the UB40, um, the punk group called the Slits. Yeah. You know, uh, Johnny Ratner, the one of the man that I come on my show. Sid Vicious, the one of the man that I come on my show. And thing, you understand? Because we're doing very well. So Adrian Shea would start putting out a lot of my song. So my next other album come out now called Roots Me Roots through Adrian Sherwood. And that's how everything start explode again. Yeah, so yeah. Was that when the band, the backing band Creation Rebel was formed, or was that later? Yes, that's when Creation Rebel, right? Uh, those are the guys we toured because um, them used to have a little basement in a stone bridge, and I was going down stone bridge in the car, you know, we are past where I look girl and all them type of things and so on. <laughs> and eventually, me and these these little band, this guy play some sound and, and it's like a basement. Go down to the basement and realize now, so these guys have certain things going. So we start raising with the Adrian Sherwood you no know, remember we're up on a tour now. So we need a band properly now for you know for move the thing. You understand? Instead of we are singing this record. You understand? Uh, wherever it might be. So what we do? We start raising with the Adrian Sherwood. The Adrian said, all right, but Adrian know these guys too. You understand? So eventually that's how everything come together. And we just start set the tour together. Many times we're up on the road, and Adrian Sherwood would drive the car. I went in the car and the car go, mm -hmm. <laughs> and fall asleep. 
Tu viens de mal se pas mal. Je vais dire, yeah, John, pull over, man. Pull over and get him in half an hour asleep before we move again. Il me dit, OK, Barry's man, it's all right, Barry's man, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So some sometimes that's how things go in it, you know, because you know when it up on the road is a lot, you know, and it, he's the one who put in most of the shows them together. So we did we did the whole of the Ding World circuit and so on. Like one night, Prince Farai was playing at hundred club, and I was just like in the audience and thing, and show you know Prince Farai really put on a show. But man, them say yo Prince, yo you can't stand up in the audience them kind of way and and give you something, brother. Man, I'm drawing me upon the stage. <laughs> right? I'm a go I'm a do, me do 10,000 lion. But in the crowd, no, there was Bob and the, in the crowd, at the front of the crowd. I've never met him before. But he's it, it, an artist that I've been listening to from a little kid growing up. I just love his songs, okay. you know? So after I came after the system, said, hey, hey, man, come here, man. What's your name, man? So my name is Prince Hammer. He said, listen, man, I would love to, I would really, really love to come and see you. Again, where you playing next? I said, yeah, well, listen, I said, I'm playing at um, Ding Wall's Club um, on, the on the Friday, the Saturday night, yeah? I said, okay, then put my name on the, the list. And to God, when I was on the stage and look, it was Bob and the stand up in front of me because I didn't leave his name and he did came to my show. And I tell you, so we had such a good night. He came around him, gave me some big hope and everything like that and some praises and everything like that, you know? Because most of those times, what I used to do, I used to sing and DJ at the same time. I do both things. But I used to do a play on stage before I start my, my, my singing. I used to maybe act as like a judge with big wigs and all these type of things and so on. I do a play like with a Jackila with all these type of stuff, you know, Jackila outfit and all these type of things. Or a harmony, do a harmony play and all this type of stuff. And then I start my singing and I would sing and then DJ, sing, DJ. So that's what, that's what I was doing all along the way. So I get chosen by a lot of these, like the Boomtown Rats, the Clash, UB40. These people came to my show and they chose me to tour with them. And I opened all these shows, you know, like um, even, even Dan Cherry, Nina Cherry Dad, you know, wow. I, I, did a, I did a big tour with him as much too, <laughs> you know. Wow. So, yeah, that's where everything starts from. And But Adrian Sherwood is the one who naturally really give me the real push okay. in England because he was the first person to say, well, all right, Prince, let's go. <laughs> Here I am. 